morning, Chief. How are you today? Oh, yeah? Would you like to start the day at the park? Let's do it. Days with Jordan the Lion and this guy begins now. And good morning to you too, guys. How are you, Jeffrey and Nando? Nando, why are you frozen in mid-dance? Is it going to be one of those days? All right, well, let's go hit the park. Well, we are here. Not too many dogs out here right now, actually. Kind of overcast still. Well, what's up, guys? We are post Magic Castle day. Michael had a blast, sent me an email, and, or sent me a text message and said, you know, thanks for making it happen for my friends. His friend Gregor was hilarious. Apparently he's like in a touring Swedish band, and every time they would do something that was kind of crazy, as far as illusion-wise, I would look over at him and he would go, like, he just kept, like, turning his head going, like, I just, like, almost like, <laughs> if you've ever seen when they interview football players about whether they believe in dinosaurs or not, and they're just like, uh, you can tell me all you want, I don't believe they exist. That was the look he had on his face when he was watching them do these illusions, like, I, I, I don't know how they did this, but I, it didn't happen. I didn't see that. <laughs> and also, Kevin sent me a text and said, hey, man, do you want my banjo? He wants to get rid of his banjo for some reason. I said, you know what? I'm almost positive that Michael has told me he's always wanted a banjo. So Michael's now getting a free banjo. So last night when I came home, I popped a movie in and it was an old classic that I love called Easy Money, starring Rodney Dangerfield and Joe Pesci. And as I watched, I was sitting there going, you know what, I'm kicking myself because Rodney Dangerfield's buried where I was at today. This meaning yesterday when I was uh, doing the Peter Falk vlog. So I think I'm just gonna head over to Westwood again. And I think I'm inspired today to do a vlog all on Rodney Dangerfield. So I think we'll probably go by um, his grave, maybe his last apartment, and geez, who knows what else. We were invited to go over to Kevin's later and hang out. Um, so we might do that. So who knows, who knows? <laughs> And one thing I'll say about the Magic Castle, no matter what show you go to, like every night they have about, I don't know, maybe eight different performers all around the castle, through every little hallway and stairwell and nook and cranny, there's a performance space that you don't even know is there until you walk in. You never see the same routine twice, and you never see a bad performance. I mean, they really have a quality standard there. Now, unfortunately, you didn't get to go to the Magic Castle, did you? He walks away as I ask the question. Very fitting. This is kind of unreal how dead this is today. I mean, it's not like it's 7 a.m. right now. I mean, it's 9.30. Oh, and I just wanted to say a big thank you. For some odd reason, I don't know what happened this week. Maybe I'm even getting trolled, I don't know. But I've gotten like eight or nine emails asking, where's your wish list? Where's your Amazon wish list? Or like, how come I can't find anything? There's nothing on it. I, um, you guys got me pretty much anything I needed as far as equipment wise or anything like a month ago or maybe even two months ago. So honestly, if you can't find it, it's just cause there's nothing on it. I, um, it's the same link it always was. I just, yeah, I just don't need anything right now, but thank you anyway. Days with jaw right now. It's pretty uneventful, isn't it jaw? So as for Rodney Dangerfield, I have two solid memories in my life that I always think of him. It's, it was pretty much my introduction to him. I don't know which one came first, but the two things I always think of. So if you've never seen Rodney Dangerfield's work, you might even want to pause this and go watch some of his stand-up specials. I mean, not even the ones that he recorded. I would say even the ones that he, they were called like the Rodney Dangerfield uh, up and comers or new comic special. Back in the 80s, he used to pretty much expose and showcase all the greatest young talent out in the world in the world of stand-up comedy that people didn't know of. So I remember my mom and my um, stepdad both watching these together, and but <laughs> I think maybe the very first thing that I ever saw of Rodney Dangerfield that made me a fan was I remember my mom watching um, Back to School and him doing that triple landing jump and he gets to the top of the diving board and he does the fart noises with his armpits. 
I think that was the first thing she ever showed me and I lost it. I remember learning how to do that with my armpits. I'm not gonna do it now because I don't know if I could do it anymore, but I remember learning how to do that back then and he's just always stuck out at me as being one of those funny people that you just, you can't even look at his face without laughing because you've seen so much out of him that you always think of just that person being extremely funny. However, he did make a very memorable performance in a movie in the 90s playing a character you would not have expected, and I'll talk about that in this vlog. Hey, Ja, I've been thinking a lot lately that maybe in a month or so, you and I need to go take a trip to Nashville. What do you think? I don't know if we have any uh, fans, followers, viewers, or whatever in Nashville, but I'd kind of like to go pretty soon. Hey, Ja, would you be up for going to Nashville? Hey, what are you doing? What are you doing? I feel like I caught you doing something, you little sneak. All right, we've been here for a while and not one dog has shown up. I think we may have to, uh, I think we may have to change the plan and head out and go do the vlog. I'm thinking I'm even gonna take you with me today. What do you think of that? You can go to the cemetery? And this is hilarious. I woke up to a text message from my mom. I had sent my grandfather a pair of the green Days with Jordan the Lion sunglasses in the mail to his uh, P.O. box. And he mentioned the other day that he had gotten them. So when I woke up today, I had a text message from my mom saying, I'm gonna have to send you a picture. Your grandfather, who <laughs> annotate here, is 90 years old. She said, your grandfather is going all over town wearing those green sunglasses. She said, you would get a kick out of it. <laughs> she said he was waiting for me at, I forget where they were, like a shopping center or whatever, in the car, and he fell asleep. And she said, he had two people knock on the window to make sure he was alive in there. <laughs> What would you do if you were walking by and saw a gentleman wearing green sunglasses asleep in his car? You'd have to wonder, wouldn't you? Papa? you gotta think about that kind of stuff these days. <laughs> what, did you think I was gonna leave? Not without you, man. This might be the first time we've ever been here for an hour and not one dog came. Not one dog showed up. All right, let's go visit Rodney. What do you say? Oh, one of my favorite bridges in Hollywood. Every time I come by here, I always point it out. It's the bridge from Invasion of the Body Snatchers. They're here, you fools! They're here! I think I just freaked out Jaw. Well, today's vlog is on the life of one of my favorite, if not maybe my all-time favorite comedians, Rodney Dangerfield. There goes the neighborhood. You'll notice there's no birth or death date on here. But Rodney will never be able to be forgotten. It's pretty interesting. He grew up basically a, with a single mother. His dad was only around like two times a year and his mom was actually born into the Austro-Hungarian Empire. If you watched any of my Budapest vlogs, you know all about the Austro-Hungarian Empire and that whole horrid rain that that happened. Rodney Dangerfield, even as a kid, knew he was funny and at the age of 15 he was already writing stand-up comedy bits for older entertainers. He, uh, he ended up changing his name to Jack Roy when he was 19 and started performing. Now, life stepped in and kind of sent him down an odd road for a while because he ended up getting married, having um, kids and basically putting his career on hold he became a salesman and a lot of people think you know even though he was always a funny guy those days as a salesman kind of helped prepare him for being a comedian he would eventually open up Dangerfield's comedy club he would be known for not only his I can't get no respect act and his great comedy but he would also be known for all the phenomenal movies that he did. He, I mean, there's one of those famous stories that he, he had done a movie in the 70s, but it wasn't actually until Caddyshack when it was really like a part that, that was for him and that was something that was gonna be seen. So the very first time he did a line, like nobody laughed because they're filming it, you know, and, and they yelled cut and he did another one, they yelled cut and they did not, and finally he looks over at one of the actors and he goes, God, I'm dying right here. And they're like, what are you talking about? You're you're hilarious. He, like he was ready to quit the movie because he thought he wasn't funny and they're like, "No, Rodney, we just have to we have to have it clean for the for the movie. We just can't be laughing on camera." 
But that was, I mean, seeing him as Al Shervik just pretty much set you up for what you were going to get for the rest of his career. You had Easy Money, Back to School, Meet Wally Sparks, even Ladybugs, like all this stuff that you may not even know him for. Even that stuff was good. And then he was blowing everybody away when Oliver Stone cast him to play the sexual molesting and abusive father of Juliette Lewis in Natural Born Killers. I mean, I'll never forget when I watched that movie for the first time and saw him. I just couldn't believe what I was watching. Now, the great thing about Rodney that I, I really wanted to do this vlog mainly for was because one of the things he doesn't get enough credit for is discovering talent. For a couple of years there, Rodney Dangerfield had a televised special that he was breaking all these new comics to people. He broke Andrew Dice Clay, Sam Kinison, um, I mean, God, it was countless. You can literally just type in Rodney Dangerfield specials and throughout the 80s, he was, he was breaking all kinds of people, Roseanne, people that had never done anything, people that he had maybe seen in a comedy club or somebody had told him about. He would even give people advice. They said that Eddie Murphy said the, the first bit of advice that Rodney Dangerfield gave him was to stop the cussing. And years later, when of course Eddie Murphy would become famous for that, that cussing routine in his early career, um, Eddie Murphy tells a story where he was standing next to Rodney Dangerfield at a urinal, and all of a sudden Rodney just looked over and said, ah, who knew? <laughs> so I'm gonna take us over here in a little bit, and I'm gonna show us uh, the last apartment of, well, the last building where Rodney Dangerfield lived. And one of the great things about Rodney also is that even though, you know, he passed away in 2004 and lingered in a coma, a lot of the people I know from the comedy world, stand-up comedians, they have told me stories about how Rodney used to show up to do stand-up acts at um, the Laugh Factory or the Comedy Store. People like Joey Diaz would tell me and they said <laughs> Rodney would always show up in a bathrobe. They're like, this guy, you know, just chain smoke, cigarettes and weed and would show up in a bathrobe and just, he was at that point in his life where he just didn't care. <laughs> didn't give an F, if you pardon my expression. And that's pretty much the way Rodney always was, you know? Early in his career, he would be overly worried that he wasn't funny or, you know, overly paranoid, overly self-conscious, but that's what everybody ended up loving about him. You couldn't watch a performance of him on, like, Johnny Carson or David Letterman without seeing the host just lose it. The host couldn't even sit through an interview with Rodney Dangerfield without dying, so... I figured, you know what? Rodney, if anyone deserves respect in the end, it was Rodney, so... Today's vlog was all about Rodney Dangerfield. Now let's go take a look at the last building, and ironically, the last building that he lived in was right across the street from where Freddie Prince killed himself. So let's head over there. Well, here it is. This high rise right here was the last home of, well, call him Jacob Cohen, call him Jack Roy, or call him Rodney Dangerfield, but this was the last home of Rodney Dangerfield. Incidentally, this was also the last apartment building that Freddie Prince lived in. And Freddie Prince actually killed himself right over there. I'll do that vlog some other time. But I wanted to end over here, at least this portion of the vlog, because I just thought it would be interesting to tell you how he became a success, and a lot of it had to do with his name. He had been performing in the Catskills doing stand-up comedy and realized he wasn't really getting anywhere and most of the reason that he, he kind of felt that he wasn't getting anywhere is because he said that he was uh, lacking a defined character. He didn't really have anybody that any, like he didn't have anything about him that people could relate to. And Jack Roy wasn't necessarily the kind of name that you could relate to. So what he did and how he came up with Rodney Dangerfield is he just stole it. There was a, a character on Jack Benny's radio show in the 40s that was an underdog that never got any respect that went by the name Rodney Dangerfield. And it was also a character name that was given to Rick Nelson on the Ozzie and Harriet show. He liked the whole thing behind it, became Rodney Dangerfield, but never changed his name to that. So even when he passed away, he was still Jack Roy. Well, we're back. What do you say we hit an old favorite, Jaw?
Where are you going? How did I know? How did I know? Oh, this is rad. Usually I get Jaw the Big, like the the ones that are like huge, that look like a real bone. They have the small ones today, so I'm gonna get these. Hey Jaw, do you want these or do you wanna do you wanna hang out here all day? Hi. At some point I'm gonna have to try this. The impossible burger. Meat from plants. Whoa. So you can chalk this up to uh, only in Hollywood. We're just walking down the street and uh, Ja goes over to say hi to some people and one of them happens to be the uh, musician Moby. We've actually vlogged his house, the Wolf Lair. He was over there uh, having a juice and Ja went over there and started playing with him. Next thing I know he's licking the side of Moby's head, so <laughs> unreal. I was 99% sure it was him and then I looked at his hat and it said Little Pine and that is the restaurant, the vegan restaurant that Moby owns. So. Not too surprising that he was having a cold pressed juice and hanging out with my joster. So I finally decided what to do with the Joshua Tree patch that I bought last, what was it, two weeks ago? Decided to put it on my down jacket. I thought that would look perfect. I think it looks pretty awesome. What do you think? Okay, so a perpetual problem that I and just about everybody that uses a DSLR continues to have is cutting back the wind noise and you know trying to use the microphone built into your camera but invariably the external microphones like these generally work a lot better the problem is they're very directional so if you're somebody like me who you know talks from behind the camera a lot um, you have to flip the microphone around a lot and if you're talking to someone else that creates a little bit of a problem, and if you ever watched my vlog on Dee Dee Ramone's last days, that's a prime example. We, you know, we were going to be having a conversation, so I knew I couldn't leave this on, or else you wouldn't hear anything that whoever wasn't near the microphone was saying. You wouldn't hear anything we said. So I took the microphone off, and it picked up so much noise. I decided to invest and try out these little uh, these little wind muffs that go on a DSLR. So you would basically take one of those eye hook looking deals, you put it on there, remove the uh, the top little sticky part, and then you put this, uh, this windscreen on there. I'm gonna try that out and hope that works. That might, um, or at least what I'm hoping is that it will enable me to not have to use that quite as much. Um, especially with us going up to Paso Robles next week, I would love to be able to uh, to rely on my camera microphone and not have to flip back and forth for that event, so we'll try it out. All right, well I went ahead and put it on. It looks really good. Um, I know you can make these yourself. I've done them before for the camera I'm actually using right now, but this particular one was so cheap and I liked how uh, detailed those little eye hook things were to put on here and it's you're not messing around with glue or anything like that, so I just opted for paying 20 bucks and they sent you about, I don't know, it looks like about 12 or more of these things, so. Hopefully this will be do the trick. I might try and do a vlog tomorrow without my uh, microphone they usually put on top and see how it goes. Okay, so it looks like they give you six of these things. And then like, uh, I don't know, what is that? Uh, what's 12 times 3? 36 of the uh, eye hook thing. So if the sticky stuff ever wears out, I guess you're supposed to reuse these things. So not a bad deal. All right, I think we should take a uh, stroll down Hollywood Boulevard. I think you know why. Wow, look at that old Rambler. Well, here we are. In a funny bit of irony, I think even Rodney would have loved. Here he is on Hollywood Boulevard's Walk of Fame being remembered for his contributions to the entertainment industry and all the laughs he gave us. And it's only fitting that every day he'll get walked on and stepped over. I think even he would love that. There you go, Rodney. You finally got some respect, sort of. And speaking of no respect, somebody pointed this out when I showed this the other day. They misspelled her name on every side of this. <laughs> good job, guys. Well, good evening, Lionhearts. I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog on Rodney Dangerfield. I want to thank Betsy Radinsky for becoming my newest Patreon. And thank you all for watching. I'll see you all tomorrow, and 
Have a great night. Good.